Hello everyone, I'm Manuel from the Unbiased Product Reviews channel. This is the first Unity tutorial on this channel. It's a series of videos which we are going to create a first person zombie shooter game. So without further ado, let's get started. We have an empty Unity project here. Let's create a folder and name it Scripts. Now in the scripts folder create a C-sharp script and call it player movement. Open the script by double clicking on it. First we need the character controller which is the Unity's built-in class for controlling the player. We need a vector tree move direction to control the direction of the player. The vector tree has three arguments which are x, y, and z. We declare a float speed to control the speed of the player. Now we declare three float to control the jump functionality of the player. They are gravity, jump force, and vertical velocity. Now we need a run speed and walk speed to make the running ability of the player. Let's set the default values of the variables. In the epic function, we make the walk speed equal to speed and get the character controller component that is attached to the player game object. Now let's create move the player function. We need to set the direction of the movement by get the values of user inputs. Unity has a built-in feature to get the horizontal and vertical axis. You can see the axis name in Edit, Project Settings, Input Manager. The X of the move direction is horizontal axis and the Y is 0 and the Z is vertical axis. Then we transform the direction to the world space and multiply it with a speed and time dot data time which is the time from the last frame to the current one. We use it to make the speed constant in every devices with different frame rates. Now if we press the left shift key, the speed will be equal to run speed. And else, it will be equal to walk speed again. Call this function in update method to run it in every frame. Now let's check if it works or not. Get back to Unity and create a plane for our ground floor. I prepared a Unity package that contains textures and sounds. You can easily download these from the internet. Now attach the material to the ground and create a capsule as the player and attach the character controller to this object. After that, add player movement component to it. Let's click on the start button. As you can see, it's not working because we have an error in our code. We had too much closing parentheses here, and we need to tell our character controller to move towards the direction we have. Now let's check again, and as you can see, it's working now. So I'm going to make the jumping part of the code. Write apply gravity here and declare the function with this name too. In this section, we are going to check if the player is on the ground or not. The vertical velocity decreased by the gravity multiplied by time dot delta time. We don't want the player has ability to jump when it's not on the ground. The y direction of our move direction would be equal to vertical velocity multiplied by time dot delta time. Now let's create the player jump. Here we will check if the player is grounded and we are pressing the spacebar with input.getKeyDown. And if it's true, then we make the vertical velocity to be equal to jump force. Ok, save the code now and check if it's working or not. It's important to check the game and make sure if everything is ok because it's easier to debug your code. 
as you can see it's working. Now create another script and name it mouse loop. In this script we declare three private transforms which are player root, look root and hand root. We write serialize field to make it visible in the inspector. We create a boolean to invert the up and down direction of the camera as we have seen this feature in different games. We write sensitivity to control the rotation speed of the camera. Write a vector to and name it default look limits. We use it to limit the rotation of camera, so the camera doesn't rotate too much to the bottom or up. We write look angle, current roll angle, and last look frame to use them later in this code. In the start method, we lock the cursor so the cursor is always in the center and the cursor indicator is invisible at the start of the game. Let's declare the lock and unlock cursor function. We want if the player press the escape button if the cursor is locked right now, so it should be unlocked. And if the cursor isn't locked, we want the cursor be locked and make it invisible. Okay, now let's call it in the update method. After that, declare current mouse look and check if the cursor is locked, then the current mouse look is equal with mouse axis. And again, you can see the axis name in the edit, project setting, input manager. The x argument of current mouse look is equal to the y of mouse axis and the y of current mouse look is equal to the x of mouse axis. Let's make a new method called look around. In the method, we make the look angles x and y to be equal to current mouse look multiplied with the sensitivity. Now we want to implement the rotation limits of look angle dot x with the help of massive.clan. Please notice that the x and y of the default look limits are not the x and y of axis. They are up and down limits. Now let's see the local rotation of look root. We use the quaternion.euler to set the rotation in unity. Ok, now let's get back to Unity. Change the capsule name to player and create a child empty object and name it look root and drag the camera to this. Now attach the mouse look script to player object and drag the player object to player root field of script and drag the look root object to the look root of the script. Now create a cube as a child of look root and adjust the position. This is our gun object for now. I think we should have a hand root and attach the gun object to it as a child. Let's drag the hand root object to the hand root field in most look script. Get back to the script now and set the local rotation of player root. We need to change the y direction of it and set the x and z to 0. Now set the local rotation of hand root equal to the local rotation of look root. For inverting the up and down movement of camera, we use conditional operator. To do so, we write the boolean first that in our case is invert. To say if it is true then do something, we write the question mark then the things we need, that in our script it's 1f. And after that we write colon that operates as else statement. So whatever we write after colon happens if the invert is false which in our case is negative 1f. Our most look code is ready, let's get back to Unity and test it. As you can see everything is working fine. Now create another script and name it shoot. Open the shoot script. We declare a private floor and name it next time to fire and set it to zero. We use this to set up the fire rate of gun. Make a serialized field float and name it fire rate. Now let's declare the camera and name it cam. We need a game object as shoot origin. 
we can call this game object shoot ball. We need to set up the range of the gunshot. We need an impact effect game object as well as muzzle flash particle. In the update method, we need to check if the player press or hold the fire one button which is left button of the mouse and if the time dot time is greater or equal to next time to fire, then we should set the next time to fire value to time dot time plus the inverse of fire rate. Now we create a shooting method and play the muzzle flash particle. We make a raycast hit and name it hit. If the physics.raycast that comes from the shoot position and goes in the forward direction of camera and save the heated object as heat and the length of the raycast would be equal to range, then check if the collider of the heated object is not null, create an impact game object that instantiates the impact effect in the position of the point where the ray hit the collider with the rotation of the normal of the heat point. We need to destroy this game object. I write particle system for impact effect which is wrong. We need to change this to game object. If the heat object has rigid body component then add force to it in the opposite direction of the heat dot normal with the force of impact force. Ok get back to unity to check if it works or not. Attach the script to the player game object, set the fire rate to 10 and drag the camera to cam field. For shoot position we need a new empty object in front of the gun. Attach it to the shoot pole of the screen. Set the range to 100 and set the impact force to 30. For impact effect and muzzle flash, you can get the free unity package in the asset store. Just search muzzle and check the free assets, then download the varfx asset. Import this package to unity. Then open JM assets. VARFX, FX, muzzle flashes and select the muzzle flash that you like and drag it under the hand root in the hierarchy. Adjust the position and rotation of it. Disable the light object and disable the loop and play on the wake and set the duration to 0.3 on every children and the parent itself. Now drag the muzzle flash object to the muzzle flash field of shoot screen. Now check the game and see that the muzzle flash is working good but the 0.2 for the duration is better so change it to 0.2 and test the game. It's fine now. After setting up the muzzle flash, it's time to set up the impact effect. So get back to effect folder and go to bullet impact folder and choose one of them and drag it to the impact effect of the shoot screen. Let's play the game to see how it works. It's not working because it is destroying right after the instantiation. So we should add time for destroying it and we destroy it after 2 seconds. Get back to unity again and check this. It's working fine. We need our gun has a shoot sound too. So get back to Visual Studio, create a serialized field private game object and call it shoot sound. Copy the impact go and paste it. Change the hit dot point to shoot pose dot transform and rename it. After that destroy the game object after 2 seconds. Get back to Unity to test it. I'm going to use the shoot sound that I already downloaded from the internet. Just drag the sound to hierarchy and drag it back to the project window to make a prefab of it. Now drag this prefab to shoot sound of the script. Hit the play button now. As you can see it's not working. So get back to Visual Studio to fix this problem. I forgot to change the impact effect to shoot sound. After changing that, get back to Unity and test it. And this time it's working fine. So that's it for the first video and if you like it, please hit the like button. In next videos, we are going to make the health script, zombie AI and lots of other features like spawning enemies in the game and reloading the mag. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell to notice when we publish the next video. So see you in the next one.